Hi again then guys and welcome to one of the most anticipated reviews from you guys. I keep on getting messages about when am I going to break down this car, do a tune for it. And of course earlier on today I did just that, a tune set up for the BMW M3 GT race car. It's of course a Group 3 machine, and it's a car which you could argue doesn't even really need a tune setup. The handling is already so good, it's already becoming notorious as an OP vehicle in the Group 3 category, and it was a car which, as I mentioned in my overarching review of the 1.28 patch as soon as it came out, it surprised me by how much I actually liked it. Because this car, I think, is one of those vehicles that has definitely benefited from the style of game that GT Sport is. Because in previous Gran Turismo titles, but especially between 4 and 6, the game really favours extremely fast, extremely powerful straight-line cars. And although not all tracks favour that, a lot of them do. Route X, Route 7, the NURB, Le Mans, Spa even, if you've got a really powerful car it helps out a huge amount. Various other tracks too, the kind of acceleration, even top end speed sometimes, that something like for instance the Z4 GT3 can have, it's just overwhelmingly quick. Likewise with something like a Viper Team Orica, or a Mercedes SLS GT3, whereas with something like this, or some others too, you're looking at more like 230, 240 miles per hour, which would be quick for this game, but certainly wasn't for Gran Turismo 6. And although the handling was really good, it just didn't feel entirely necessary. Now, on the other hand, not only does the game treat the car with more respect, I would say, in terms of how good they've made it, but it also feels more justified in using something like this because GT Sport, more so than arguably any other Gran Turismo game, has become almost more about the handling of the car than the straight line speed. Certain tracks do still require it, such as the aforementioned Le Mans, or of course Tokyo Expressway, but the majority of circuits are very tight, very technical, very cornering oriented, rather than straight line speed. And of course a car like this isn't the type of thing that you would typically take around the old version of Le Mans anyway. So if you need that speed, it, it can do it, but it's not that kind of car anyway. Now speaking to its spec, I already said of course it is Group 3. You would assume, rightly so, that the price would be the same as all of the other Group 3 cars, which is of course 450,000 credits. So it's well priced, certainly compared to the past of the franchise. As far as the engine, of course, 4 litre V8. Obviously, rear-wheel drive goes without saying. Just under 500 horsepower, just under 370 pound-feet of torque, and it weighs in at just under 1,250 kilos, 1,245, which means that the horsepower per ton is a fraction over 400. But this is definitely one of those race cars which, again, especially in this incarnation of the franchise and of the series, goes beyond the numbers, because it doesn't have the raw size and torque of something like a Corvette or a Viper, it doesn't necessarily have the kind of compact body style of something like the Alpha 4C race car for instance, but what it does have is an excellent all-round package. Now BMWs are known of course as being driver's cars, the road cars, fantastic, the M3 is arguably the pinnacle of that legacy, others are great, the 1M more recently, the M2, the M4 even, and of course the M5, in particular the V10 engine version is an icon, and even as far back as the E30 M3 where the legacy started. You don't get that kind of reputation without being a good driver's car, and I would say for the first time ever in the franchise, this generation of M3, the E92, has finally got the kind of representation that many of its fans have always wanted, because the E46, interestingly, has always been treated well. The old school M3 GTR race car has always been brilliant. This one though, not so much. The road going E92, it's not that quick in GT6 compared to how quick you'd expect it to be, compared to its 600 plus horsepower might have you believe. Now though, this one can finally compete on at least equal footing, and ironically now, it actually has the upper hand because of how OP it is. Now a number of people are surmising, based on how good it is, Porsche or Beetle Group 3 car style, that it might be maybe held back from certain lobbies by the owner of the lobby, maybe used less, or heavily nerfed with balance of performance and future updates. We'll have to see if that happens. 
And of course, if a car is completely dominant, it's relatively fair to give it some kind of ballast. That's generally how the FIA does things. I don't always agree with that mentality, of course, because otherwise you end up with the Mosla scenario and various others. But to a certain degree, it is fair to keep the race closer. That is what many people want to see, and it's what many drivers want to have. They want to have more of a challenge. Those kind of drivers wouldn't necessarily be using this car in the first place, though, because they'd just use something more challenging. For the moment, I would say enjoy it while you can. If the car does get nerfed, then that'll be down the line. So just as you would with, like, an amazing glitch, be it money glitch, speed glitch, if you want to use it, use it now while you have the chance to. Get some victories under the car's belt. It's certainly capable of that. In terms of how it actually performs, I, of course, did a tune for it earlier today. Got around the Nuburg Ring in 6.47 or thereabouts with stock power and weight. So it definitely has potential there. It goes without saying again. And the handling, as I alluded to in my initial 1.28 breakdown video, is much more reminiscent of a touring car than it was before. And to be fair, that was actually one of the reasons why the M3 GTR was always so good. The exact same reason. It didn't feel like a GT car, it felt much more like a touring car. It felt much more akin to stuff like the Mercedes CLK and the Opel Astra and the Alpha 155 than it ever did to stuff like the Lister Storm or various others like that. The McLaren F1, you could say, it's more of a GT1, obviously, but these kind of extreme GT1 or GT style cars, basically, whereas this one feels more like a touring car, more like the M3 GTR did, and I think it's all the better for it. The grip level is insane, the handling through corners is totally forgiving, sometimes it even feels like it has too much grip, even on hard tyres. It's great. In terms of straight line speed, not the most strong thing out there, especially top end, it can be beaten, but most of the scenarios where you'll use this car probably won't need much top end speed. As I said, most drivers will be sticking to tracks where you don't really need that anyway. So it's not really something that you'd have to worry about the majority of the time. It's an excellent race car, definitely one of the standouts of the 1.28 pack, which I would say has proved to be one of the strongest all-round updates that we've had so far in terms of the vehicle selection. You might not be happy with them all, but all of the cars, for more or less of a degree, are useful for something, at least. Whereas in previous packs, I'd say the standout was probably when the Group C cars came back, which of course was fantastic, but this one, it's got more variety even than something like that. This one, being the only new race car in the pack, of course gathers a lot of attention, but I would say that for anyone who wants to represent BMW, You've got a good one here. It's a great car to represent the brand with. It's incredibly competitive. The, the past week or so basically has proven that. And in terms of tuning, well, if you want to check out a setup, if you happen to need one, you could, of course, check out the vid I did earlier today. Not that many people would probably need to because it's already such a good car. And to top it all off, it sounds good as well. It's really loud, a lot louder than I expected it to be, especially compared to the past. Stuff like the Z4, they always sound very muffled in comparison. This one sounds great. You've got that pop and bang on the release of throttle. Sounds great. So if you haven't checked it out yet, I'd recommend doing so, and that's coming from someone who's not even a fan of this car, usually. So overall, great vehicle, great addition to the game as well. And that's it for this pick, so I'll see you guys next time, and for now, as always, Thanks for watching.